Welcome, I am Hafid and I am about halfway on drinking my first bottle of the day. This is a 32 ounce bottle, so I need to drink at least two of these throughout the day. And this is also alkaline water. If you are in the Houston area, I truly recommend to go to K&H alkaline water because honestly the water does taste different and right now texas is in a state of emergency where you cannot drink tap water now i used to drink tap water because it's free but there is a bacteria right now in the water that is just messing up what your brain is messing up with your body so you just drink anything but tap water you can boil it and then drink it but i recommend to get alkaline water and you can do your own research about alkaline water because there is a difference now i kind of need to wash this bottle because it's pretty dirty but in this video i will be unboxing the dynamic floating objects project once again this is my first time reaction to opening these project examples from the insidium content repository and my goal is to understand how they were made so i can apply those principles and techniques to my professional work do not confuse this as a tutorial this is not a tutorial this is not a master course but simply me going through these projects analyzing them and me just wanting to learn more about x particles now you can follow me on instagram to see the final result or simply just keep watching to see how i go about the process all right so less talking and more doing let's go Okay, so here's the project file and I'm just gonna press play right away. And you can already see the simulation going on. Now I'm gonna go to my toolbar and select the real time preview for Cycles 4D, attach it to my window and just start it. And you can see that it looks pretty much like the preview that it's on the website. These products are pretty much ready to go and ready for you to start experimenting with them learning from them and just creating something new so for now i'm gonna close the real-time preview restart the timeline and i'm gonna hide the lighting and environment for now i'm also gonna disable the camera view so i can see the whole thing open up the xp system and just take a quick glance of what this is made out of i'm gonna open up the modifiers but i'm gonna disable those for now i'm also gonna disable the dynamics and the generators and i always like to start with the emitters i'm gonna disable the second one and start with the xp emitter water body i'm also going to hide the camera from the viewport and disable the insidium icon also i'm going to open xp join and hide those cubes for now so the only thing that we have right now is the xp emitter water body i'm going to make my windows a bit bigger so i can see that information and on the object tab i can see that the emitter shape is a box here's the size and it's emitted more now i'm going to go to the emission now as far as i know when you emit particles they're going to be fluids you want to start with the hexagonal emission and what i think that's going to do is just emit the those particles evenly so this is what they have hexagonal emission only emitting from frame zero to frame one so i think this is more like a shot of particles but they last the whole time and they have a radius of four so i'm gonna press play and see how that looks and because these particles have no speed they're just spawning in this hexagonal grid just filling up that rectangular shape that the emitter is i'm gonna go to the display change the mode from squares to circles go back in my timeline and go to the first frame this just gives you a better representation of the actual radius of those particles and you can already see how packed they are in this rectangular box that is an emitter it is more information to display so i'm gonna change it back to dots go to the first frame again and i can easily move my viewport now now before i render i'm probably gonna change the radius of those particles just so the effect is a bit more refined now in that same emitter water body they have a material tag that is what's gonna give those particles a color they also have a cycles for the instance tag which is going to create an instance of a sphere for every particle in that emitter you can change the segments the size the size variation and the seed now for the second emitter i'm gonna go ahead and activate it go back in the timeline and just play it and what i think that this emitter is going to do it's gonna spawn those cubes or any shape that you want to put in that emitter now i want to leave the generators at the end so the next thing i'm gonna activate is the dynamics i'll activate the xp fluid go back in the timeline and just play it and i can already see some motion happening but it's very subtle i'm gonna open the xp fluid effects i see that the accuracy is in medium 
the mode is in velocity and before rendering i'll probably set it to high or to accurate now the next thing i want to activate is the modifiers and i'm only going to activate the gravity for now i'll go back in the timeline play it and everything is just chaos i'm going to pause it go back open up that gravity and it looks pretty standard so i'm not going to change anything for now i'm going to activate the xp turbulence go back in the timeline press play and i still have chaos so i'm sure that this xp join dynamics and this dynamics tag is going to do most of that work to maybe keep those particles together so once again i'm gonna go back and finally start activating the generators i'll activate the xp join make the objects visible and play that and that is pretty much what the simulation was the first time i opened it i wonder how some particles are getting out of the way of this box they're pretty much keeping that shape and not going outside of the bounds i'm gonna click on the xp join dynamics and i think that whenever you add a tag to an object it all, Cinema 4D automatically creates a tab inside of there so you don't really have to click on that specific tag on the right like just go to the object and whichever tag you put is going to create a separate tab so i think that's pretty handy now the distribution is on vertices and this generator is triggered immediately here you can see the radius and all of those options and they are using that emitter to place those cubes in the position of those particles now what i'm seeing is that this emitter, which is the green circles, doesn't have a cube for every particle. And it makes me wonder if it has to do with the radius. But I'm gonna go to constraints. There's nothing in there. Modifiers, nothing. Display, nothing. So I'll go back to the tag and maybe change that distribution to volume. I'm gonna save it just in case. Go back in the timeline, press play. And the distribution of those particles is actually using the cubes as a reference. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be using this water body. And you can kind of see that those particles are in a cube shape, but I don't think that's what we want. So I'm gonna put it back into vertices and lower the radius to maybe at two reset the timeline save it just in case play it now we have chaos so i'm gonna reset it back to three go back okay and it's stable now it's really interesting how sensitive this simulation is and you can see over here that it is coming out but if i press play let it load it will come back in i'm gonna press ctrl d go to the settings go to x particles and maybe move up the iterations to five save it go back in the timeline and just press play again same thing is happening press play they go back so i'm just gonna move it back to three and that is pretty much it for this simulation i'm gonna open the real-time preview again dock it to my window and because my lighting and environment are deactivated you can actually see that some of those particles have an emission so i'm gonna go to the xp emitter water body click on the material here at the bottom and i'm gonna dock the node editor over here and here we can see how the material is kind of built this is the final output and it's made out of two materials using this mixed shader now for the first shader they have the emission they have a strength of five and the color comes from a block body emission the temperature is around 3500 i don't know if that is celsius fahrenheit but from using other node editors i know that the lower it is the more red orange is going to be we can go as low as 800 and they're pretty much going to be red and the higher we go the brighter and bluer are they're going to be so i'm just going to keep them about 10,000 and maybe put the strength on eight now i'll go back to the mix shader and for shader number two i don't know why they have this so i'm gonna delete it for shader number two they simply have a principal bsdf it's got a base color of black specular almost all the way up just a bit of roughness which i'll probably increase to like 0.1 0.99 is fine it has some sheen tint the index of refraction and i think that this alpha is what makes that emission appear or disappear if i move it all the way back you can see that most of those particles have that emission material so i'm gonna put it all the way back up come out and the last thing to check on the mix shader is the factor which is how much is shader number one and shader number two are going to be mixed so let's follow down node and they're using a color ramp which is simply a gradient which is just a small amount of let me make this wider put it here so you can see it this is the gradient on the color ramp which has like a thin line of black now for that factor i'm gonna follow the node and this is one of the reasons the cycles for the is perfect match for x particles this particle info node is what allows us to use the information information from all of our emitters the index the age the lifespan position all of those attributes can be combined with the node editor to give those particles a material in this case we're using the color of the particles to drive color ramp and drive the factor that's going to mix those two shaders so let me check on the emitter go to the display and i think that they're using this grading color of the particles 
So I'm gonna close the node editor, make this a bit bigger so we can see it. And now I'm gonna make visible the lighting and the environment. I'm gonna open it up make this bigger and now i can see that the reason that those particles are coming out of the emitter but not spilling out is because we actually have a tank that is holding out those particles if i make that visible you can see that tank and this is why the particles are not spilling out because they have a xp collider tag which is similar to the cinema 4d collider body it's set to the inside so anything that is inside that's colliding inside of this tank at the moment it only has a friction of one maybe i'll crank that up to 10 10, 11 and i'm gonna hide it because we don't need to see it now there is a plane i don't know why we need a plane and it has a material called holdout which i don't fully understand now the cycles environment is similar to octane's hdr environment if i click on it i go to hdr i go to the tag you can see that they're using the material which is essentially what it's gonna light the whole scene and that is pretty much it i'm gonna click back on the camera so we can go in i'll click on the cycles camera tag and they have the depth of field activated so we can get that blurry effect it makes a lot of these things realistic i'll deactivate it so we see how it looks turn it back on and we can see those green particles that were not in the initial reference just floating around and i think that i might actually use those for my final composition okay so now it's time for me to play around with the parameters the materials the lighting try to come up with something more original and for this video i am going to be using cycles 4d just because those particle emitters are easier for me to do thanks to that particle info node so let's see what i can come up with Okay, so here are the colors that I decided to go with this composition. For the spheres, I decided to add this subsurface scattering lavender tint. And I replaced the cube with a couple of bigger spheres. And I actually created this raspberry looking texture with the microscopic included textures and the cycles for the surface extended. And you can find here microscopic. This is actually just one sphere. I don't know why it looks like I cloned a bunch of spheres on top of it. It's just the material but it works so i really like how this turned out and the only downside of using subsurface scattering is that it's going to have to calculate all of the lighting coming from those emitter particles and from my lighting setup but i think that it's worth it as you can see on the spheres that are around those em emission particles you can see how they are being affected by the light and the other ones not so much also because of the depth of field the ones that are taller in the scene are not in focus are more exposed to the hdri and you can see them that they're being hit by the skylight so yeah i really like how this turned out there is some noise that the only thing i don't really like about cycles 4d is their current denoiser maybe i don't know how to use it properly but octane renders denoising is a bit easier for me to use like i said i'm using 15 samples right now and what i've been doing for social media posts is actually not rendering at the highest quality per se because it's gonna be compressed anyways so definitely for my thumbnail i am gonna i'm possibly gonna increase this to like 30 samples samples and if that is not enough the final animation is probably going to be up to 50 samples so depending on your computer this might take a while i don't have a problem just leaving it in overnight but i'm just letting you know how long it's going to take so this was the unboxing of the dynamic floating objects project from the insidium content repository you can find the final animation on my instagram account at the high quality one but you can also check out all my other accounts i have a geometry account i have a characters account and in my main one right now i only have two posts because I'm setting up a specific theme and I also right now don't have the necessary assets to create my next piece but it will come it will come soon lastly let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions